How are you going on, folks? Um, look at what can I say? Another another fairly decent day there today. Um, just going through the results here now again. Uh, we had Bob Ollinger in the first, or no, we didn't actually have Bob Bob Ollinger in the first. Brave Man's game in the first. Um, Monkfish winner. Um, heaven help us was very very impressive. I was very taken back by her. Put the kettle on, lovely jovely. Um, I hope you all listen to me. Obviously, look at Shaq and Porsois. Didn't really show his true colours here in Cheltenham, and possibly he's more of a Leopardstown or, I don't know, say a Punchestown horse, something like that. Maybe he's just not, I suppose, suited to travelling. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he, he didn't really put up a, a decent performance there today, and put the kettle on was the one to really show the chinks in the armour. Um, Easy's land... Oh, that was a tough one to take. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's no, um, there's no getting by it, folks. It was just a, a bit of a slip up by me. Um, the, the cross country has been a bogey race for me over the past three years. I had Fitz Henry in the 2019, uh, who was second behind Tiger Roll. Um, I then had Tiger Roll, who was second behind Easy's Land in 2020, and I had. Uh, Easy's Land who was second behind Tiger Roll so uh, it's just been one of those uh, one of those races where it's just it's it's just not going for me at all um, because Chosen Mate ran no sort of a race and uh, Sir Gerhard was ultra impressive I was very very taken back by it and uh, I hope you all listen to me that uh, the favourites don't win the, the champion bumper Um and I suppose Sir Gerhard was definitely the next best in line. But uh, moving on to tomorrow, I am fairly confident of a, a fairly decent day now tomorrow. There's some short price favourites. There's some big price outsiders. So it's going to be covering every every aspect of, of the, I suppose, the punting scene, basically. Um, but without further ado, we may as well crack on with things. The 120... And this one here is the Marsh Novices Chase. And this one here looks to be fairly certainly going to end via lane at one to two. Um, I'm absolutely delighted. I'm on at 11 to eight or um, eight to 11. Actually, I, I'm not lucky enough to be on 11 to eight. I did have an anti-post bet um, at four to one earlier on in the year. But uh, unfortunately, I cashed out when, uh, when I heard that the horses were going to be going to different stables. I thought... I mightn't actually get to Cheltenham at all, but uh, realistically, I, I'm happy enough with the way things are going. If NYLN wins, I will be ultra happy. Those who know me and uh, those who have been following the page would know that I am a big, big fan of NYLN. If Regardless how much money I'd have on them, um, if I'd have any money at all, I'm always very, very... Um, overwhelmed when NYLN gets his head in front. I think he's an absolute superstar. I think he's going to be... Um, I suppose you could say this generation's article. Now, I know that's a very bold statement to make, but as you all know, I love making these bold statements. And uh, so far, so good. They've Most of them have, have been coming coming in for me now at this stage. But uh, um, yeah, realistically, and Violin should have this race in the bag. I, I can't see any horse that's going to be coming near him. Uh, looking down through the field, most of these need to improve at least £10 to get to him. Um, and I, I think the fact that it's on level weights with, uh, with 11 stone four on every horse's back, it, it's definitely in Violin's race to lose. He should be winning this by a very comfortable margin and uh, in, in very comfortable fashion as well. He shouldn't really need to leave second or third gear. He'll probably have to be asked, I suppose, to quicken up coming around the bend like he was last year and I suppose just take on and, and, and take off really. Realistically, he is the Irish banker. Uh, most people are on at four to one, say earlier on in the year, anti post bets. And uh, I hope for those sake um, that they all come in uh, at that sort of a price. 155 then, and this is the first handicap of the day, the pre tomps. Uh, this one here is the final here. And this one here, I am going to be going with a bit of an outsider here, uh, with double figure hearts here called Brinkley for David Pipe and Tom Scudamore. Uh, currently priced in around 14 to one. Now, realistically, this one here. Um, I suppose the drying ground doesn't really suit him. Uh, he's more of a heavy, heavy ground horse, and he, he definitely looks to be more talented on on heavy ground. Um, but saying that, he's put up some fairly decent 
decent performances uh, from his time in, in Ireland. He was seven out of 25 uh, in, a, in a flat race by when he was with uh, Elizabeth Dyle. Uh, ahead of him was Front View, J- Jungle Junction, Farseer de Large, Standoff, Capilano Bridge and Talon Gale. Uh, most of those would, I suppose, hold up some decent form. In behind them, Stormy Judge, who was uh, a very much a revelation there this year. Uh, Cedarwood Road, another massive revelation. Nero Rock has been fairly decent for Mouse Morris. Um, looking through the field, I think that's in or around it. Zambezi Fix has been, I suppose, a bit consistent. Um, and... That seems to be it, if I'm not mistaken. I think no one, no one else has actually gone gone on to win a race. But the next race out then was uh, when he was third behind Blue Sari, who was only a, a literally a neck behind M Violin. I think it was Blue Sari, wasn't it? Just going back there now, just through the form. Um, he was second. He was second behind M Violin. He was three quarters of a length second. And um, this lad was only a length, a length behind him. So in theory, this lad could be only a quarter length worse than uh, in violin, which is a bold statement to make. But um, yeah, this one here has been fairly decent. It, look, at them were in yielding to soft and soft. So he is going to be meeting ground he doesn't know. Um, he, he looks to be best on heavy ground. So... I wouldn't be necessarily confident about this one, but if this horse can put up a decent performance and if the horse can actually go on to do bigger and better things, um, he's had a fairly nice price to do it. Now, he's coming from David Pipe's yard, who have been an absolute revelation for him this year. Um, So far in the past couple of weeks, they're going off 25% win rate. Uh, the jockey Tom Scudamore likewise as well going off 24% win rate so when you're looking for consistency and when you're looking for talent and potential uh, this Brinkley has has it all in the books um, I think when you're looking to go for these I suppose handicaps you're nearly better off going for big price horses in here um, realistically there's nothing really down the bottom of the market that's really standing out for me probably one that's going to be coming in under the radar like that's that's probably the one that's going to win it but um yeah i can't i can't look look past brinkley in my opinion he is the best horse um at the price he is i think 14 to 1 is a bit of an overstatement and he should be definitely there thereabouts in the finish providing he's able to handle the ground now the 230 then the Ryanair. And uh, for me, this has to go to the nap of the day. Uh, Min, um, currently priced at five to one. And in my opinion, this horse here is definitely the best horse uh, in Ireland and in England uh, over two mile four. Uh, at five to one, he looks to be the one to beat. I can't see Alaho being a deserving favourite. I don't necessarily think that Alaho is worthy favourite, considering the fact that he was... Uh, he, he was paddling a little bit there coming up to the last in, in Turles last time when he was ahead of Ellie May, who in in her own regard is a very talented mayor as well. But at the end of the day, she is a mayor. Um, no, that's not, not trying to sound disrespectful or anything like that. But um, generally, this, this horse is going to have to improve massively to, to I suppose, put it up to Min, um, especially in a, in a race where Min is, is going for the... the I suppose, the double in consecutive years. Now, Min is definitely the market mover, in my opinion. I don't think there's anything else. Fakir Dairy is moving in the market. Mr. Fisher. Um, Sam Crow is getting well supported. So that could be definitely very interesting. And, Dre- and Dashiell Drasher is definitely a massive market mover at 40 to 1 into 16s. But realistically, they all have to beat um, Min here. And at, at 2 mile 4, there's no reason why he can't put this race to bed again. Um, in my opinion, he goes on any sort of ground, goes on any sort of track. He's a Cheltenham Festival winner. He was the only one that was really putting it up to Alti or there at uh, two mile in the champion chase there a couple of years ago. And um, I, I think Min is definitely a very solid nap of the day. And at five to one, you'd have to wonder what the bookies are thinking. Um, for a horse that's already won uh, this race last year and going up against... I suppose, a, a two-timer here. The only thing that's out of Min's favour here is his age. Um, I'm trying to look at the, the statistics here. 11 out of the last 12 winners of this race have been between 7 and 9. Now, Min is 10. 
But I think Min is just a little bit um, outside the box. I think he's better than what people think he is. And I think at two mile four, there isn't a horse in Ireland or England that's going to stop him. I think five to one is definitely overpriced. And therefore, he is my nap of the day. 305 then the stairs hurdle and this one here is going to be a bit of an each way aspect here um obviously look at paisley park is the the, the rightful favorite and i suppose the the clear the clear cut favorite here when you when you think about overall form and key stats and key trials and everything else like that but the fibrillating heart is the one turn off for me uh i think two to one is a little bit short to be going all all in here um in terms of say what the horse has done is definitely deserving favoritism but i just don't like him i i think i think two to one is a little bit short for me i think if it was if he was out to maybe four or five to one i definitely would be suggesting them to to uh definitely do the business here but flooring porter at seven to one this one here is going to be my pick of the day and this one here has to be thought of considerable um considerable reason here it was a very very impressive grade one winner in the in the the i, I suppose the irish equivalent in uh, the dublin racing festival there at christmas um realistically it, it was a very very impressive winner that day it went from the front it uh it, it set a bit of a brisk gallop and when the horses in behind started to close in on them this horse picked up pricked his ears and picked up again and and kicked onto the line and that's exactly the signs of a great horse uh when you see a horse getting swallowed up the natural instinct is just to give up and and just start paddling there and then this horse is different he he pricks his ears he kicks on and he is going to set up a very very stiff test to paisley park and at seven to one each way this one here has to be the the pick of the race for me the 340 then this one here is looks to be a little bit of a plot job here. Um, I know I sided with Jordan again for there today and I didn't bring him any luck, but I'm going to side with him again here with the shunter at nine to two. Uh, for me, this one here is the next best of the day. Uh, realistically, this horse has been in serious, serious form. Now, the sneaky getaway was very unlucky there today. The fact that it just couldn't get to the, I suppose it couldn't get the start it wanted. Um, what we were hoping for with, with Sneaky Getaway was that he would, I suppose, start off in front and set the pace. Now, heaven help us, did exactly that. And that was the winning and losing of the race for us. The false start definitely was the the, the losing of the race for us. No, no doubt about it. It was uh, definitely hindering our lads' chances. But uh, realistically, heaven help us was the, the, the best mare in the race. But the shunter here... Um, I just went off topic there for the moment, but the shunter here definitely looks to be the one to be on. Uh, it's been absolutely in savage form. It, it put up a very good win last time out, which led to this race adding on to be a bit of a bonus and a bonus of a hundred thousand um, pound. If if this horse wins this race here, uh, which is definitely what Emmett Mullins is probably eyeing up now at the moment. Emmett is a very shrewd trainer, and he he's very good at placing horses. And I think he's placed this horse absolutely perfect here. This horse comes in here off 12, 10 stone 12 in great form. And uh, with Jordan Gainford taking seven pounds off, this, that practically leaves him, I think, in or around bottom weight, if not uh, exactly that. Um, just going through the card, I think he is bottom weight. Um, no, he's not. Uh, who is bottom weight? Paddy's poem is, is, is bottom weight. But... Um, yeah, realistically, the shunter should be very hard to beat. There's an awful lot to like about him. Um, the fact that he's in serious form definitely does stand out in the books. And uh, it should be it should be a fairly decent day for, for Emmett Mullins here, as well as the Irish con contingency. Uh, 4.15 then, the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Another Irish one and another each way selection here. This one here is going to be my dark horse of the festival. And this one here somehow is on the drift. I don't know why. It's the best mare in the race. Uh, Sky Ace at 14 to 1 for the Shark Hanlon and Jody McGarvey. Oh, my God. I, if this horse wins, I will absolutely roar the house down. And uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a very, very nice winner for me. Uh, I've been a massive, massive fan of Sky Ace since her debut for the Shark Hanlon. 
Uh, for those who have been following the Peaky Blogger for a considerable amount of time, you would know that I, I wrote an article there at the start of the jump season saying that this horse was definitely one to be keeping a close eye on. And uh, <laughs> I said in that article that this, this horse wasn't even going to graze the grass in Cheltenham. But uh, she's actually come in here with a seriously, seriously live chance. And there's one thing you cannot do with Sky Ace, and that is write her off. But still, she has done absolutely everything people have asked her. She's done everything that people haven't expected her to do. And still, people are just not rating her a great horse because she costs 600 euro. Um, for those who have been following her, she's won at 28 to 1. She's won at 66 to 1. She has come second at 10 to 1. And she's won at 10 to 1 and won at 15 to 2 since joining Shark Hanlon. Now, realistically, that is plenty good uh, to be able to put in a decent performance in here. Uh, the, the mayor she's beaten is second to none she's even beaten on her last run she's beaten a few geldens as well uh which definitely does no it wasn't actually the last run i think it was the run before that um no it wasn't that's mares as well maybe she was just mixing it in mixing it with with uh with gelden company but in terms of facing mares she's definitely one of the best mares in ireland um colin McHugh, the owner i want to wish you the very very best of luck tomorrow i you know as well as i do how much i how much i love this mayor if this mayor really does show show her true colors in here she's going to be very very hard to beat and uh it's definitely going to be very very emotional uh no doubt about it uh, finally, then the last race of the day, the 450, uh, another handicap here, the uh, for Kim Muir. And this one here is going to be the biggest price horse of the day, folks. This one here is going to be go another one for um, John McConnell and Simon Torrance claiming three pounds at 33 to one. Now, realistically, this one here definitely looks to be one coming in under the radar. Uh, as a couple of people know, we were talking to John McConnell on Sunday night uh, in regards to the, I suppose, the Cheltenham Festival coming up and just a general interview with, with John. And uh, in fairness to him, he was very open, very honest. Um, he told us exactly what he thought of the horses that were going to Cheltenham. He says that uh, some neck had a decent chance each way. Came to her there today. And uh, he was he seemed to be very sweet on this go another one. Now, I don't know whether this horse is going to win the race or not, but I'm going to take my chance and I'm going to say 33 to 1 is very much overpriced. She's coming in here on a very, very lenient mark. Now she's coming in here at, um, she's running off 11 stone 9, but she has been mixing it with fairly decent company. She put up, I think, four or five on the bounce. Um, she won two there earlier on the year. Um, I think it's a she. Is it a she? I'm not, I'm not sure. It could be a she or a he. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, no, it's a he. Uh, sorry, John, for, for that comment. But um, yeah, no, look, at go another one here. Um, realistically, the ground is starting to come into his favour there now. Um, I suppose the, the winds is come on yielding to soft. Good to yielding. Um, good. Good again in Clan Mel. Good in Pert, good in Turles. Um, good to Firm in Kelso, good in Stratford. Uh, good in Pert. Yielding in Killarney and good in uh, Market Raisin. So realistically, there's more good to good to yield in, in the ground now tomorrow. Now with the drying ground that's, that's been coming, um, that really puts go another one into, into serious contention here. I'm not saying this horse is going to win. Um, nor John said this horse was going to win either. But the fact that it's on a competitive mark, the fact that it's mixed it in with some class one company and it ended up winning as well, and the fact that the ground is starting to come into his favour, that definitely brings Go Another One in here with a serious, serious challenge. I think 33 to 1 is very much overpriced. I think get on board each way. Um, what's what's to lose a 33 to one have a euro each way have a two have two euro each way whatever you want um this go another one here is going to be very very hard to hard to hard to beat if it gets into the swing of things and gets going up the hill but look at that's all i have time for now uh for today 
please make sure to keep liking, sharing and subscribing. I hope that you followed uh, the likes of Put the Kettle On and Sir Gerhard. Monkfish wasn't really worth following there today. And I hope you didn't lose too much on Easy's Land. I'm going to cover my head with that. That was very, very poor for me. But uh, realistically, look, we're still in profit. We're still getting our heads above water. Three winners there today, four winners yesterday. Hopefully, we'll go for the five tomorrow. That's exactly what we're aiming for. That's what we're hoping for. And look, at we might get there. We might. But look, at, I'm going to leave it there. Please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. And uh, the very, very best of luck tomorrow, folks. I hope it's another great day for us.